I recently covered creating and using the default HTTP client, a named HTTP client or a typed HTTP client. And I laid out a few of the problems I had in my multiple HTTP client setup. After which I presented you with a solution, which was my solution, a bit of a hacky workaround solution, which wasn't the proper way to solve that problem. So let's take a look at something that actually can solve my problems, which is the delegating handler on the HTTP client. By using the delegating handler, we can make our own custom message handlers. Message handlers are a bit similar like middleware or filters or pipeline behaviors. And with a custom message handler, we can write some code to execute before or after the HTTP client handler actually sends out our request. It's commonly used to add or modify the request headers Think about setting the authorization header to authenticate your HTTP calls or even setting an API key, a trace ID for better tracking and monitoring and all kinds of custom headers. And even when the response comes back, you could also add that trace ID or that custom header. And I'm also going to use that to set some extra headers more likely the authorization header. I'm going to work with a named HTTP client, but you could do this with a typed HTTP client or even with the default HTTP client. So I added the name of the client and I set the base address to my API's address. And I created a new class, the HTTP client delegator, which will use the delegating handler and now we can overwrite the send message of the HTTP client. So we're going to choose for the async one and that's going to give us the send async and the send async is basically the method behind the get async post put delete async and all of the other get from JSON async and so on. That's basically the base method. And then here we can alter the request data. So let's have a look dot headers. And we could simply either set the authorization to with a bear token and then to fill or just add custom headers string like that. And you could even, a bit like middleware, you could even say response equals and then and then even set the response headers. Let's say add and we could add that same X trace ID. Of course, you'll want that to be something consistent, not the... Or you could go as far as to inject the, for example, the logger and then say information and say trace ID, something like that. and even and do the same thing for the response if you want to. So I'm going to use this to actually set this authorization token and maybe in the future I'm also going to add a check on the J JSON web token to check whether it's almost expired and maybe refresh that token to make sure that the call succeeds and then maybe even a retry policy to retry if one of the calls fails and you could do all kinds of things with it but let's now focus on that authorization header the difficulty with my setup is that the access token is only available either after a user manually authenticates so goes through the login form or when 
the, the user has a, an access token or a refresh token and that way that gets verified and we know that token is valid then we can get it from the local storage so that would be an id to just get it from the local storage let's see if we can do that the local storage service from chris sainty's package injected and we could do something like token equals await local storage dot get but first how do we actually use this is by adding a add http message handler and then we need to pass that http client delegator you could make multiple delegators for example one checking the token expiration and another one handling the authorization and then maybe another one doing some logging and then you can just all add those one after another and how to use such a client a named client is by calling the http client factory create client with that same name and let's quickly take a look at how I currently authorize the HTTP client. And to show you that I set these tokens into the local storage. So in the delegator, I could get them out. And then I let it crash intentionally to show you that we need to register this HTTP client delegator. And we're going to do that as transient. Let's go over here. Services.add transient HTTP client delegator. Let's quickly fix up the code. Let's get item async. It's going to be tokens. It's the tokens.access token. And let's and if I now go to a page in my application I see the access token logged so I successfully retrieved that from the local storage of course I can do that with my setup for a backend setup it might be an ID to add a singleton to the dependency container and then access that so we could call it maybe HTTP client conf and then we could get that and just add that as a singleton And then, of course, I have to go to my authentication service um, where I set the alt header. I might want to set that client config property, but then I have to inject it. Shared proper, uh, object again, but this time it's not the HTTP client instance that is shared. It's just a simple class dot x token equals access token that should make sure that the client delegator can access that token as well and that works as well so that is the proper way of authorizing the http clients and having authenticated or authorized http calls for all of your other services or callers as well instead of sharing a an HTTP client instance and making that available to all of these callers it's a better idea to use the delegator and if you need to share something maybe add a singleton of find a way like going over the local storage or something that you can access 
I'll likely put all of this in a NuGet package or an extension method because uh, just to make it a one-liner and I still kind of have my problem with my higher level module that shouldn't know about this project the implementation project this one still needs to know which HTTP client to access so that was a, like a secondary problem but I think I'll just solve that in a stupid simple manner I'll just do something like uh, by simply passing the HTTP client name and then initializing a new letter subscriber state pass that HTTP client name and this state gets injected in this client that's kind of the pattern I always follow with these modules then in this state we can get that HTTP client name from and in this way even the HTTP client setup from a, a module can benefit from the same authorization headers the same modification or additions that happened on this HTTP client. If this video was helpful to you, don't forget to let me know by liking and subscribing. If you want access to the original code of all of my most useful Nougat packages, you can get those simply on kisco.com slash products. Sign up and I'll make sure you get them. If you want even more access to most of my code, then you can become a Patreon member as well. And there you can find a lot more. I hope I see you in the next video.